Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create sliders that use different device frames. It's a very neat look, and we'll be using the device frame slider widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin to help us achieve it. With this widget, you can create sliders like this one to showcase your images. Choose from a selection of device frames, add your images, and you're good to go. Moreover, you can combine this widget with others from the key add-ons collection, such as buttons, info boxes, or CTAs, to create whatever design you want. The device frame slider has all kinds of customization options, which let you adjust its looks to match your site design. So, with all these different possibilities, let's see how we can make a device frame slider for ourselves. Head over to the back end. And this is the page I'll be working on. I'm copying one of the designs from the widgets page, so I already set up the background image and text. I added them to give a bit of context to the element I'll be setting up. But as they are not the focus of this tutorial, I'll only briefly cover how to add them after we go through the device frame sliders options. Ok, we'll start by looking for our element in the Elementor sidebar. Device frame slider, there it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. As you can see, it's pretty large and it automatically elongated the height of my whole section. So now we can see the background image and text in full. Given how much I have to scroll to take in the slider, which will make showing you everything more complicated, the first thing I want to do is adjust its size. To do that, let's open the Style tab. And within that, we need the set of settings called Style. And you'll need the first option in here, Device Width. You can use the slider to adjust the width, or you can type in a value here. I'm going to put 254 pixels for my slider. There, it looks much better now. So, I'd like us to go back to the Content tab, where we can start going over the options from the top. The first thing we have in here is the field where we can upload our slider images. I'm going to select mine now. It'll be these three. Create a new gallery. Once you've done that, you can adjust the image order. Reshuffle them if you like, and the images will appear in the order you set them from left to right. Ok, now insert gallery. And with images, this is starting to look a lot more like a proper slider. And this is what we get without any major modifications. I have a frame, there are navigation arrows within that frame, the images are on a loop, so as you can see, you can get set very quickly. However, there's a reason why the slider came with all these other options, so let's see what they are. Underneath the images, we have the device frame option if we want to change the frame for the slider. As we can see, the default one is mobile, but we also have tablet, laptop, and we can set a custom frame. With this one, you can insert a custom device image. So if you want different devices, a frame for your gallery, or simply a frame with a different color, this is where you'd add it. And if you do decide to use a custom image, picking one that's about 800 pixels wide is a pretty safe bet. Also, your image will need to have the transparent sections necessary for displaying the slider images. A bit obvious, but it bears mentioning. For my slider, I want mobile as the frame, so I'll put that back. Ok. After this, we can choose whether to disable the device frame shadow or not. It's enabled by default, and it creates a faint shadow around the device frame. If I disable it, well, you can't see much of a change as my background image obscures the shadow. But if you're using a single color background, then the shadow can give a bit of depth to the slider. In any case, there's no harm in me keeping this, so it's gonna stay enabled. Alright, the next set of options is for the slider settings, so let's see what's in there. For one, we can choose the slide effect. The default setting is slide, so the images seem to slide one into another. But you can switch that to fade, and then the images will seem to fade into one another. I'll stick with slide, but whichever you choose is totally down to preference. Then, the next option keeps the slider looping. It's set to yes by default, but if you prefer a slider that your visitors would navigate on their own manually, then you can switch this to no and stop the slider from looping. Then we have the enable slider autoplay. It's also set to yes by default, and it's what allows the slider to start moving as soon as the page loads, so the visitors won't have to trigger it in any way. This is something I want to keep. 
Below this, we have the slider duration field. The default value is 5000 milliseconds and that's the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. I'll make the duration shorter by setting 1700 milliseconds. We can see my images are sliding by much quicker. After this, we have the slider animation duration. It represents the duration of the animated effect that makes the images seem to slide, or fade if that's the effect you set. The default value here is 800 and I think that's ok, so I'll keep the default value by leaving this blank. Following that, we have the Enable Slider Navigation option. By default, the navigation is enabled so you can see the arrows within the device frame. We can set Node to turn them off. After this, we have the Enable Slider Pagination option. It's enabled by default, but it's hard to spot because it's stuck under the device frame. I'll show you how to fix that when we come to the pagination style options. For now, my design doesn't include the pagination, so I'll disable it. Our last option in this section lets us enable custom links. It's disabled by default, but if I enable it now, we get a new input field. And you can add a different link for each image. Just separate them with commas and then when someone hovers over an image, their cursor will switch to a pointer and they'll be able to click on the image to open the link. And the links, as you enter them, will go from the first image in the gallery to the last one, in order. So link 1 for image 1, link 2 for image 2, and so on for however many images you set. I don't plan on using this for my slider, so I'll put it back to no. Following this, our next section is for the developer tools. When we open it, we can see there's just one option here. And if we switch its setting to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, this light grey text, which we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. Ok. And that's that for the content tab, so we can move on to the style tab. And here we have the slider navigation style and slider pagination style settings. Since I disabled both my navigation and pagination, we can't see any options for them. I'll show you what the settings are in a bit. But for now, we can take a look at the style section. Here we have the device width option that you might recall from the start of this video. I used it to adjust the width of my slider by setting 245 pixels. But in terms of unfamiliar options, we have the image border radius. And this is very important, it's this option that lets us smooth out the edges that peek out from the frame. So with this you can drag the slider and track how the edges start to round out, like so. And as I said, you can use the slider or, what I find easier, type in a value. I'll set 40 pixels for mine. Ok. Below this we have the image offsets. This option lets us adjust the image offset in case it doesn't perfectly fit in the frame. When I start to increase the values evenly, you can see how the image gets pushed inwards. Now, I went too far, but I wanted you to see how the option works, and how you can adjust the image to fit whichever frame you choose. Since it's more likely your image will only need to have its offset adjusted on one side, you can click here to reset the default values and delink the fields. That way the values you enter won't be applied to all sides of the image. Given all of that, I'll put one pixel for the right side and one pixel for the bottom. There we are. Now my image fits perfectly, no trailing ends. And this is what I wanted from my slider. This is the design I decided to use. But we're not done yet. I promised to show you the navigation and pagination style settings. To be able to do that, you need to enable them. And I'll start with the navigation. So, content, slider settings, and enable slider navigation. Yes, ok. Now when we go to the style tab, we can see that the slider navigation style has a number of settings. The first option, navigation position, lets us switch the navigation arrows from inside, the one we have right now, to outside, which looks like this. Or two together, which puts the navigation here at the bottom. Ok, I'll set mine on the inside. Then the next option, hide navigation, Let's us set below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. There are a few choices here and you can try them out and see how they look on different devices. After that, we have the navigation vertical offset, which lets us move the position of the arrows up or down. And we have the same for the horizontal offset, so we can move the arrows closer together or further apart. 
Below this, we can replace our left navigation arrow by picking something from the icon library or by uploading an SVG. So that's arrow previous and we have the same for arrow next or the right arrow. Then we have a set of normal and hover settings. We can switch between them to reveal different options. Under normal, we can change the color of the navigation arrows, like so. Then we can give the arrows, or their holder to be precise, a background color. I'll keep this just to show you the options that come after. This lets us change the navigation arrow size. It's very straightforward. It increases the arrow size, but it also affects the holder, as you can't expand the arrow without expanding the space that holds it. Then we have the navigation arrow holder width option. It increases the width of the arrow's holder, which we can see thanks to the background color. And the option after that, navigation arrow holder height, does the same for the height. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you here, so I can reset everything to the default values. Just a sec. And then we can look at the hover settings. Here we have the option to change the color of the navigation on hover. So the color is only visible when someone hovers over an arrow. And we can also set a background color that would appear on hover, like so. And we have one more option than we did in the normal display. Enable hover arrow move. Thanks to it, when someone hovers over a navigation arrow, there's this movement effect. We can switch it to no, and then the arrow will stay stationary if someone hovers over it. And that's it for our slider navigation style options. I'll just go back and disable the navigation as it's not part of my plan design. However, I will enable the pagination next, so we can take a look at the style options for that too. Okay, and let's go to style slider pagination style settings. And now we have all kinds of settings that will allow us to style a pagination including making the pagination bullets, which are faintly visible here at the bottom of the frame, easier to see. But let's start from the top, the pagination position. It's set to the inside by default, but we can set it to be on the outside. I'll switch it back to inside so I can show you how to adjust the bullets position to make them more visible. But before we start on that, we have the pagination alignment option. The default setting is at the center but you can switch it to start and then the bullets will be on the left we can of course put it back to the center or set it to end which will put the bullets on the right side of the slider okay i'll put mine back next we have the enable numbers option if we switch it on we get these numbers here instead of the bullets so if you opt to use the numbers you can change their color here you can set anything you like and we also have some typography settings for the numbers. These include things like picking the font family. You can scroll through this list or search for a font if you know its name. Then we can pick the font size here. And we can adjust its weight using this option, so we can set any of these values to determine the font weight. There is also the text transform option, but it won't do much with numbers. It's here because it's a regular part and parcel of typography options in general. Then we have the style option, where you can try out these settings and make the numbers italic, for example. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under, or through the numbers. Simply pick what works for you. And to round out the typography options, we have the line height and the letter spacing. Okay, that's that. I can turn off the numbers now, so we get the bullets back. So, our next option is the pagination offset. We can use it to shift the bullets closer to or further away from the device frame. There, now my bullets aren't hidden. I'll leave them here so we have a good view. Uh, once you've set that, you can change the pagination color. So, this is for the normal view. You can set any color you like using the standard color picker. After this, we have the border type option. It lets us frame the pagination bullets. Let me show you. I'll set solid here. And then it needs a width. Two pixels is fine. And finally, it needs a color to become visible. This one, for example. And now if we look, there's a thin red border around each bullet that makes our pagination. I'll reset this as I don't plan on using a border, but if you want to, you can try the other border types to see which one you like best. Following this, we have the pagination size option. 
It's very straightforward. By increasing the value, we increase the size of the bullets. And after that, the space between bullets if we want to space out the pagination bullets. OK. Next, we can take a look at the active or hover settings. Within these, we can set the pagination active color. So we can set the color here. I'll use this one just to show you. Then only the bullet that's connected to the active slide, the one that's being shown or when you hover over, will reflect your chosen color. OK. With this, we've covered all the options for the pagination and the device frame slider in general. I'll go back to the content tab to turn off the pagination as it's not part of my plan design. Just a sec. There. All right. Since this is what I wanted for my slider, I'll update the page to save it. And I mentioned at the start that I'll show you how I added all of this behind the slider. Or more importantly, how I ensure the slider will be positioned over other section elements as well as other column elements. This text saying flexibility is in the same column as my slider. So let me show you what I used to make it stay in the background. Clicking on the text opens the options and you can see that it's added using a section title element. But for us, the important bit is here, under advanced. We'll need a positioning section. Then here, the position option needs to be set to absolute. This property, besides setting the position of the element relative to the body of the page, also allows elements to overlap. Thanks to that, our slider can stay on top of another element like the section title in this case. Regarding positioning, there's another useful option here, the offset. We can use it to shift the text to the left or the right. I'm using minus one pixel for mine as it keeps the text looking symmetrical. And there's another offset option here. And this is for the vertical offset, whereas the one above was for the horizontal offset. I use percentages for this one, but just the same, when I move the slider, you can see the text changing its vertical offset. In other words, moving up and down. I'm using 18% for mine, as this will keep the text looking centered. So setting the positioning to absolute and using the offsets allowed me to put this text under my slider and to arrange it so it looks symmetrical and centered in relation to the slider. OK, let me just hit update to save my work. And again, this is my finished slider. All the images are there, everything fits in the frame and we explained the background text. So to round out the show and tell, let's just quickly take a look at the background image. To set it, you need to click here on this middle icon to open the section settings. Then in the style tab, you'll find this image option under the background set of settings. And to add an image, just click on the field and you can choose between uploading one or using something from your media library. OK, that's it. We covered all the options and even looked at how to create this background to make your slider really stand out. Now, this was just a showcase to help you see what the widget can do. But in terms of design, you can always set a different background color or image or leave out the text or whatever you like. To finish up, we can take one last look at the widgets page. Knowing which options you have in the back end and how to use them, you should be able to make your own device frame sliders easily. The widgets page showcases various design examples that you can mirror or use as inspiration. Here, we can see the example I copied for this tutorial. Of course, you're also free to create something entirely unique. How you decide to use and stylize this widget is entirely up to you. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making frame sliders can be with the key add-ons for Elemental plugin and its device frame slider widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.